I'm going to create this point of sale or this reception desk now in Revit. And you can see that what I've done is gone through and I've quickly sketched up some rough dimensions based on what I know looking at the picture. So I'm going to start with this one here. I'm going to start with the top. And I've worked out that I think it's roughly 2400 long by 800 high and I know, sorry, 800 wide. And it looks to me like it's sitting about a metre above the ground. So that's the first one I'm going to do. Then I'm going to come back and build the rest of it up and then add the black bits at the end. So in Revit, in my ground floor, if I'm in my ground floor, that means that's the work plane that I'm currently working on. I'm coming to Component Dropdown, Model in Place. It's joinery or casework, as Revit call it, and we're calling it Reception Desk. I'm doing a simple extrusion. I'm creating a rectangle. using my temporary dimensions to adjust the size of it. Over here in the properties, I nominated that I wanted the height of it to be a thousand. So that means that the height of the extrusion is going to finish 1,000 off the level floor, the ground level floor. And the extrusion start, because I want it to be about 30 mil thick, I think, Yep, I've nominated that I want each one of those to be about 30 mil thick. I take 30 away from 1,000, that leaves me with 970. So that means there's absolutely no extrusion, and then it starts to extrude between 970 off the ground and 1,000, giving me a 30 mil thick top. The material, just constantly checking back here, is a timber. And as I've already made a timber panel for the front, it probably is something more like an MDF at the top. Let's have a quick search and see if I can find MDF. There we go. I'm renaming it Zero MDF because everything that I make and that I have tweaked, I would like to be easily accept uh, accessible. That's all I need to do. I've nominated material, the extrusion start, the extrusion end, and I've created my 2D profile, of which is about to get extruded. Finish extrusion, finish the model. Let's go check it out in 3D. Okay, so now that I've got that, I'm actually going to continue working on in this family. In fact, let's have a look at this in a realistic view. I don't normally work in realistic view because it takes up a bit fair bit of time as far as just rendering and trying to let the screen uh, recalculate its resolutions. So there we go. Back to ground floor. I'm going to click on the extrusion, or the family I should say, and edit in place. So notice if I was to click again, I could edit the extrusion. That's not what I want to do. However, I'm in the family and I'm going to continue to add to that family. I can do this in a number of ways. This is just one of the ways that I'm going to do it. So coming back to my sketch, I'm going to create this area here. So I'm going to create the timber panel that sits back and beyond. So create, extrusion. I'm going to, because this is the back wall, make this the front. Looking at my sketch, I can see that I've nominated that it's a 40 mil rebate in, so I'm going to click on pick lines and offset it by 40. Zooming in just by using the wheel. Okay, and I suspect that's not solid all the way through. And in fact, let's just go 40. I don't know what the thickness of this is. I'm just going to nominate 40 at the moment. I'm just going to finish that off with a line. And I'm going to use my trim or TR to tidy up these corners. Remember, all 2D profiles must have a closed loop in order for it to work. I'm going to start at zero 
and it's going to finish at 970. However, I'm going to show you what happens if I just type in 300, big green tick. I'm just going to finish the model and pop back out of it so I can pop in a elevation. It wants to look at everything except what I want it to look at. Right, because I moved that after I created it, I need to click on the little nose of that elevation symbol and move it. So that, that means that the elevation I'm about to see starts at this point, goes from there to there and looks beyond. So what I was going to say is, can you see that when I'm in this view, that if I wanted to, after I've created the first one, and often that will magnetise, let's edit that in place. You can see that when it goes blue, you see that going blue, that means that it's now able to be magnetised and I can connect that. So, if you've forgotten what it is or you just want to make sure that the two live together, that's what we've got going. Okay, so very easily it's starting to come in place. I'm going to finish the top now. Looking back at my sketch, so you can see it pays to do the calculations first, so you can just pop back and forth. I've decided I think it's about 120 for this black strip, and then that's going to sit another 30 ahead of it. So I'm still in the model. I'm coming back to create an extrusion. I'm going to offset that by 40 again. It looked like it was roughly halfway along. I'll offset this by 20. Can't tell what's happening back here, but I'm going to try and match that one. Trim command. And I'll finish it off using a line, making sure I use my snap points to click from line to line. Now, this one here is actually a black painted piece of timber. Because all I care about for this one is to make it visually right, I don't need to worry about documenting it and putting a section through making sure it hatches right, I'm actually just going to choose the material of black paint that I created previously. Go back to my little elevation view so we can see what I'm doing. So that needed to start at 1000. And if it was 120, that makes the extrusion end in 1120. And if it helps, you can put in permanent dimensions just to double check that you haven't miscalculated anything. Okay, so it was from the top, 